Hi everyone, I'm Rajdeep, a uh, faculty here at Chintal. In today's video, we'll be solving a problem from the 2022 CMI BSc engines. It's a subjective problem. It's the fourth subjective problem to be specific. In this problem, we'll see some of the main ideas from calculus at play. Uh, or specifically, we'll be looking at a really great use of the fundamental theorem of calculus. I'll try my best to quickly go over the main idea of the proof of uh, this result. It won't be a technical proof, it'll more be, more be like a uh, an informal thought proof. And then I'll use that result and solve the problem. Uh, by the end of the video, I hope that you'll be a little more comfortable with things such as chain rule and the fundamental theorem of calculus. And it'll also be a great problem to understand how continuity works. And that's it. Uh, let's get into it. So as the problem states, uh, for a continuous function, we define the following two real numbers. The domain and the codomain of the function are the positive real numbers. AR is the area bounded by the graphs of F, the x-axis, x is equal to 1 and x is equal to R. So what does that look like? So if so I draw my axes, this is the x-axis, uh, say the graph of the function is something like this. x is equal to 1 is the line, it's the vertical line of all points with x coordinate 1 and x is equal to r is the vertical line of all points with x coordinate r. So and this is the graph of this. And ar is the area bounded by the graph of f. The graph of f, x is equal to 1, x is equal to r and the x-axis to this one. So the area we're looking at it's this one. This area is a r. Great. And b r similarly is the area bounded by the graph of s, the x axis, x is equal to r and x is equal to r square. So what does that look like? The x is equal to r square is a much further away vertical line with some here. This is not drawn to scale, obviously. Uh, so the graph of f, which is as before this one x is equal to r, x is equal to r squared, and the x-axis. And so, what that is, is it's this area. Right. Find all continuous functions, f, for which a r is equal to b r. You want to find all continuous functions such that these two areas that I've just drawn up are equal for every positive real number. So, you started one, and I mean, either you can even go to the other side, but for the sake of clarity, you take any r, any r of your choice, draw a vertical line, take another, take the value of r square, draw another line, and you want these two areas to be. Okay, so clearly this is prompting us to look at areas, and what do we do when we want to find areas of under general functions, especially when it's this, con it's quite conducive here as well. You have areas between two vertical lines. So really what is being asked of us is that since the A of R is the area between X is equal to 1 and X is equal to R, A of R is nothing but the integral from 1 to R of F of R, uh, from of F of X, D of X. Right? There's a, there's a technical question that you should raise at this point. Why is F integrable? Not every function is integrable, right? There's lots of functions that aren't. But safely, we've been told that f is a continuous function. So we can integrate it without any concerns. So ar is this. And br is the integral from r to r square, right? Look at the lifts. r to r square, f of x to of x. Right? That is what the definite integral is. As a sort of quick cutaway, I can maybe explain what the definite integral is supposed to be. Given a function f, a real number a and another real number b, the integral, the definite integral from a to b of, and this is the graph of f of x, of f of x dx is nothing but this area. 
if I call if the area of this section is a, then that's what the definite text is. And so we've been asked to solve, find all f from r plus r plus continues such that integral from one to r f of x dx is equal to integral from r to r squared. F of x dx. This is an interesting problem because the variable is act are the limits of the integrals. And so, well, first of all, what I've done here is make the problem a little more concrete. These AR and BR are slightly weird to think about, and but now we have something concrete. Okay, now the variable that really is something is the one that we care about. So this is for all R in R plus. Is are the limits of the integral, and so how do we get it out of the limit of the integral? This is where the fundamental theorem of calculus comes into play. For those of you who've seen the fundamental theorem of calculus, the first thing you would want to do is take derivatives on both sides. And why is that? The fundamental theorem of calculus, or sometimes the first fundamental theorem of calculus, because the fundamental theorem of calculus is sometimes stated in two parts. Part one is what's usually the fundamental theorem of calculus and part two is what's usually called the newton leibniz theorem but the result we're thinking of right now is that if f is continuous uh on some closed interval the interval is kind of irrelevant for us because we've been given continuity over all of r plus right and so here is continuous on every uh if we consider the function f of x from a to x f of x to x what is uh, okay maybe i should use a different dummy value. yeah what is this this is just the area and so really we only have data from a to b so anything else is kind of we don't have any other data right and so you have this function f And what capital F of X is, is kind of just the area function. It just measures the area from A till X. So this is a function, again, on the open interval, A, B, if you will. Right? It's value at A. You can even make it on the closed interval, A to B. At the value at A is the area between A and A. Just nothing. It's zero. And the value at B is the entire area. And the value at any given X is kind of this intermediate area between A and B. Okay. What does the fundamental theorem of calculus tell us? It tells us that the derivatives of f of x is just f of x. So the ch the rate of change of area is the function itself. We'll get to a proof in just a bit, but see why knowing this beforehand would prompt us to use the fundamental theorem of calculus in this situation. The the only sort of parameter involved is R, and it's in the limits. It makes sense that some a result like the fundamental theorem of calculus could come in hand. Okay, let me quickly try to explain why something like the fundamental theorem of calculus should be true. Think about what's going on. We're essentially measuring the change in area, and so. If the area up till x is f of x, so this area is f of x, ddx of f of x is just the rate of change, the instantaneous rate of change of the area at the point x. So let me take the area a bit far, further away from x. Right? And so this sort of cross hatched section is the change in area. Right? So this area is f of x plus h minus f of x. f of x plus h is, is the area until x plus h. f of x is the area until f of x. And so their difference is just the area of thin strip. And what is the rate of change? It is divided by h. But this is just a rectangle. This is essentially rectangular, right? That's that's why this is so cool. Is that you? if you move just a little bit further away, the strip that you changed your area by is essentially rectangular. And so the, the base of the rectangle is edge, and the height 
is f of x. We can make a final approximation and that goes into some very cool parts. It kind of starts getting, it starts justifying Taylor's theorem, but we won't get into that today. So maybe some other day. But for all purposes here, the height of this trip is just f of x, right? Which is just the height at x. And so this is roughly f of x. And that's it. As, as you let h tend to zero, this f of x, like this sort of approximation, gets better and better. Because the change in height is smaller and smaller. Right? And so that's the idea. That if you change the area, the rate of that change is just going to be the value of the function. Okay. And so now let's go back to our problem. Let's rewrite it one more time. We have 1 to r f of x dx is equal to r to r square f of x dx. Okay, right away, one thing that I would notice is that I have an r here and fundamental theorem of calculus only kind of works if you're taking the area from a fixed spot, not from a moving spot. So what would I do here? I would simply split this into two different integrals. This is the right hand side, minus uh, 1 to r. There's nothing crazy at all. I had the area from r to r square. I'm just saying the area from r to r square is the area from 1 to r square minus the area from 1 to r. That's not crazy at all. Why did I do this? So that all my areas are from a fixed spot, which is 1. And so this implies that twice the area from 1 to r is equal to the area from 1 to r square. Great. Now we can take that do take the derivative with respect to r on both sides. The two will come out of integral one to r f of x dx is equal to e d of r. The left hand side is simply by the fundamental theorem of calculus. It's simply two times f of x, that's all there. Sorry. And to be more better, like the variable doesn't really matter. Two, uh, two times f of r, right? That's the variable movement. The right hand side is a bit more complicated, but not too much. I know that the area from, say in this case, one to r, so, or maybe I'll use a different variable, one to u of f of x dx is f of u. So this area, one to r square is just f of u square, if you will. So what we want to find is dd of u of f of u square. Or let's not get too many variables away. dd of r of f of r square. And now comes in the chain rule. I have a variable which which is a function of the parameter with, which, with respect to which I'm differentiating. So I'll do the following. This is where uh, maybe a good memory trick is the following. If you want to if you want to do something like this, so you want to do something like this, f of g of x, right? You're differentiating a function of something that's all already a function of whatever you're differentiating with respect to. Your, your function is f is a function of g, which is itself a function of x. So in this situation, what you can do, which is not rigorous, but it's good for memory, is you can write d or d, d of x as b d of g times d g of x, d g d x. I just did, this is just, unfortunately, this is a very easy way to remember. d d of x is just uh, d d g times d g d x. This is not rigorous, but it's great for memory. The proof isn't very hard, but it's not something that I want to get into right now. But using this, I just get uh, the chain rule. This is in fact what the chain rule is. So this is just going to be 2r, which is the derivative of r square with respect to r, times dd of r square, f of r square. This r square is on our dummy variable again, which is just, so yeah, which is just 2r times f of r square. That's it. Right? This is just the fundamental theorem of calculus again. 
D D anything of F of anything where capital F is the area function is the function. Doesn't matter what what it is. It could be anything. Right now that we've already taken the dependent parameter out of the way, this is what we have. Okay, great. So going back to our previous LHS, we had already figured out that the LHS was two times F of R. Now we also have the R just now. So we get two times F of R is equal to two times R and F of R square. Right? Which is just saying that F of R is equal to R times F of R square for all positive real numbers. Great. And now we have a functional equation. Nothing to get scared about. This is a very nice functional equation because it relates R to a higher power of R. This is something which is where which falls down very easily to the continuity condition that we guaranteed right at the very beginning. It's a continuous function. And why did I say that? Because f of r is equal to r times f of r square for any r. So I can do the following. This is r times r square times f of r to the 4. Right? I just wrote down the same equation, but this time with respect to r square. R done is f of r square is just equal to r square times of r to the 4. Whatever is true for r is also going to be true for r square. Right? Which is r into r square into r to the 4 times f of r 8, and so on and so forth. So what we get generally is that f of r is equal to r to the 1 plus 2 plus 4, all the way up to 2 to the n, or any n, times f of 2 to the, uh, r to the, 2 to the n plus 1. Which is also just r to the 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1, right? I've just used the GP formula here. Times n plus r to the 2 to the n plus 1. For, you know, better indexing, I can just do this. Why is this good with respect to continuity? You might think, okay, it's just blowing up on that way. I just switch it around. I, If I can write, okay, I'll just do what I'll say. I'll write r to the 2 to the n as t, right? And so, so if r to the 2 to the n is t, then r is equal to t to the 2 to the minus n, right? 1 by t to the 2. So I get that f of t is equal to t to the Two to the minus n minus one times f of t to the minus, which is what it's t to the two to the minus n times f of t to the two to the minus n by t. Why is this remarkable? This is true for any natural number n. So I can keep increasing the value of n, and it would still work. So I can take n tending to infinity, but then when you take n tending to infinity. 2 to the minus n goes to 0. And we all, in that case, t to the 2 to the minus n tends to 1. And so, as n tends to infinity, f of t is equal to 1 times f of 1 times t. And f of 1 can be any constant. So, f of t is actually just the reciprocal function. And that's the answer. A function that looks like this will do this job. And that's the only kind of function that will do this job. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope that now you're a bit more comfortable with the fundamental theorem of calculus and chain rule and also continuity. This is an important detail. This kind of a result only worked because of continuity. We've used the fact that as t tends to 0, f of t tends to f of 0, which is only true because of continuity. And I hope you're just more comfortable with all of these ideas. Thank you so much for watching.